Welcome back to the channel. Uh, if there's anybody new joining us, uh, welcome. I uh, hope you enjoy the video. Um, I've not really been doing a lot over the last uh, month or so because obviously with Christmas and the lockdowns and you know, just stuff just mounting up, I haven't really had a chance to get out there. Um, the, there's a little bit of an issue at the moment with the um, the lockdown in the UK which is supposedly be going you know supposedly going on till March so I'm not sure how the wild camp's gonna go in February. I'm still gonna try and get over there and see if we can still get a cheeky one and if we can. Um but yeah anyway uh, the reason why I'm doing the video today is I've had a delivery uh here I've not opened it yet I've uh, I've ordered myself a new little bit of kit because obviously in my last video, I don't know if you've seen my last video, but I've actually bought a Pomoly, uh, Pomoly titanium uh, wood burning stove for my hot tent. And obviously, with it being a hot tent, and you know, we're going to do a, an extreme winter camp, um, I needed something to help me, you know, help me with the stove. So I'll show you what I bought. I'll just open it up now. And then I'll explain a bit about the reason why I went for this particular item. And, you know, a little bit of why I think it's ideal for the job. Uh, it might be a little bit of a cliche. You've probably seen loads of reviews on this. But, you know, this is this is my review. You know, I don't, I don't really know too much about the about the item itself, not too much. Obviously, I've done a little bit of research and uh, let's have a look, see if we can actually find it. Get loads of crap on it. I bought it whilst it was over in the Netherlands. Uh, let's have a look. And here's my little beast. I'll Get rid of this box, make sure there's nothing else in it. I'm stopping really ill over Christmas. No, it's not, not Corona or nothing like that. You know, just been feeling very lousy, coughing, sneezing, winter flu, you know, the stuff. Not, uh, not Corona or nothing dodgy, dodgy like that. So this is the Grounds Force Brooks Small Forest Axe. And I know a lot of people dislike it because of what it represents. But, you know, I thought if I'm going to buy an axe and it's going to last me a lifetime, I may as well go for the one that, that I want. You know, it comes with about a 19, say about a 19 and a half inch handle maybe and it's got a one kilogram head on it it's got a nice nice little uh, sheath on it which is riveted and if you can see there I don't know if you can see it but just there is the maker's mark now I know that these particular axes uh, are forged in a traditional way uh, I know that they use a machine, but it's still it's still finished by hand, you know what I mean? And the metal itself's top notch. The fit, the actual fit, you know, so far just as a quick look, is is pretty fantastic. One thing that has struck me as a little bit weird is at the hand at the end there, where the stock is, you know, it's only got a wedge. Now, I don't know if it should have a wedge and 
something else to keep it in there. Only time will tell, I suppose. But, you know, the handle's finished, finished pretty nice. You know, you've got the ground force stamp there. Ground force stamp there. Obviously, you've got a stamp on the back. And obviously, their logo on the handle. I'm not sponsored by these, by the way. All the, all the stuff I, I, I get, you know, all the stuff that we're going to show on the channel, we purchase ourselves. So the reviews are going to, you know, they're going to be honest reviews and there's going to be no bullshit. Yeah, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and we'll let you know. Uh, if it works and it needs a little bit of a modification to get it to work, we'll let you know that too. So anyway, let's open it up and have a look. the edge I don't know if you can see it it's the edge it's uh it's not amazingly sharp oh it's taking the eyes off the back of my hand you know it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't weigh too much and yeah not too bad at all I like this bit you know can use that for all kinds of things you know if you you can hook it into a tree and use it to do feather sticks uh, if you're doing some you know a little bit of fine work even though it's quite heavy for that but you know nice nice bit of kit seems to be finished well the handles nice and smooth although it has got a little bit of a, a little bit of a feel to it So this is basically the smallest two-handed axe you can get. So when I'm processing uh, logs for the wood for the wood burner, you know I wanted something just in case I get slightly larger, slightly larger logs, slightly larger diameter, maybe around this thick, maybe a little bit more. Uh, I can use the two hand for splitting. Uh, I can also use it as a one-handed a one-handed axe. But it's got it's got enough weight in the head to sit there and fell a couple of couple of dead standing trees if they're not too thick. So the dead standing should be no problem with this. And yeah, but that was my main reason for buying it was because I wanted the versatility to to be able to use it two handed as well as just one handed. And I'm gonna try and make this tool the only tool I'm gonna need in my kit. I'm going to try and make it so that I don't need to carry a bushcraft knife with me anymore. And I'm just going to try and work it so that the axe is my primary tool for every job. Now, I know it's got a little bit of weight about it, but it's small enough, I think, to fit inside my pack and not be too much of a burden. And like I said, you know, this could do with a little bit more of a... I don't know. No, no, it's... it's I'll tell a lie, it is. It has got it where it needs it, man. So yeah, and the head itself is nice and thin. See how thin it is? Don't know if you can see that there. But the head itself is nice and thin. But then tapers out here. So it's enough for splitting. It's not going to split anything major, majorly big, majorly fat, you know. But then again, I'm not, you know, I'm not chopping a full tree down, you know. I'll be using it just to process wood for the actual, for the, for the actual, you know, wood burning stove. So so far. I actually like it. I, I do like it, but you know, I've just got to wait and see what it's like in the field now. Uh, obviously, this will be coming over to the UK. If I can find anywhere to do another bit of a cheeky camp over here, then I will do. You know, just to try it out. I've not actually tried the tent out, the full the, the full tent with the stove in it yet, properly, but it's it's prohibited to, to camp here where I am so I'm you know I'm itching to get back over to the UK which is is going to be you know obviously I've got to do a 10 day quarantine and then possibly February-ish I might be able to to actually get out on a, on a proper camp but yeah just uh just something that I, I did just notice there bear in mind this is my first my first you know axe axe uh, to put the to put the cover back on, you need to kind of angle it downwards so you slide it in that way, and then it just fits over. I was having a problem with it a second ago, and but I just 
Big battle. No, it's not rocket science, is it? We'll, we'll get to grips with it. The grain of the handle, the grain of the handle itself, I don't know if you can see that, but the grain of the handles, you know, it's not too bad. It's, it's pretty straight. And obviously, you know, it's a bit wider at the top here, but tapers in a little bit. So to just fit inside the, inside the, you know, the knuckles of your hand, really nice. It's got this little bit on the bottom here. You know, you can put a lanyard through there, which I just won't be anyway. But you can put a lanyard through there because I'd rather not have it just, you know, attached to my wrist when I'm swinging it about. You know, if it's going to go, I'd rather it, I'd rather it go and just not be dangling. It's got this little bit at the bottom here to give you a nice, a nice grip at the bottom. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. It's made in Sweden. It's Swedish steel. Swedish Viking. Viking steel, Viking, no, no, Swedish steel. So yeah, it's nice, it's nice. So it's got a, a four inch, a four inch blade on it. I don't need to watch myself. It's got a four inch blade on it. And it's it's kind of an even grind all the way along. I looked at some of the, some of the axes and they, they, they kind of chunky in the middle, but then they taper off and go smaller at the edges. And I, I didn't want that. I wanted the full, the full chopping edge on it. So it can get a proper bite when you're when you're swinging it into the wood. So anyway, this is my new bit of kit. This set me back around 130 euros. I know it's a lot. You know, I know these cheap axes out there that'll probably do just as just as good a job. But I figured if I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna pay money on 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 an item, that's gonna give me you know, a hell of a long lasting use, then I'm gonna splash out and get something that I actually like the look of. You know, otherwise I'd end up buying something and I genuinely wouldn't be happy with it because I know how made works, you know, made works in strange ways. If, if I buy something and I'm not 100% happy with it, it'll, it just won't get used, you know, I just won't end up using it. Inside here is a book tells you all about the company and the actual makers and let's see who's this this is MB it actually tells you inside the book this is MB it actually tells you inside the book who made my axe and this is Matthias Blixt Matthias Blixt. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Matthias, if you're watching or you do get a view of this video, I apologise for messing your name up, bro. I really do. Uh, but yeah, it's nice to know that the actual guy that made this axe is, is in this actual book. You know? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Like I said, I'm, I'm still just getting over an illness at the moment. Tells you a lot of stuff about the axe, you know, how to use it. Uh, unfortunately, I did buy this in the Netherlands. And I don't really speak Dutch. But, you know, I'm, I'm alright at using pictures. You know, I've got away with just looking at pictures most of my life. So, yeah. I can, I can kind of get the gist of it. There's quite a lot of stuff, you know. Shows you that, you know, if the log's quite big and it doesn't split first time, turn the axe round and then hit it down, it should, you should get a split. So, yeah. I already knew that kind of stuff anyway. But yeah. Uh, what else does it show you? What else? Different types of edges. Um, yeah, just, just, you know, how to use the axe, how, how not to use the axe comes with a guarantee there which to be honest judging by the, the the build quality of this this beast i really don't think i'm going to need to be using a warranty any kind anytime soon i will however go over this with a little bit of oil of some sort because even though it's sanded nice i can still see the little bits the little perforations in it in the wood where it could have done with being a little bit smoother but I suppose that, you know, that might just add to the grip, 
You know, the, the Dax makers, they know what they're doing, you know. They know what they're doing. They don't need me to sit there and try and take their, their work apart because, you know, I'm, I'm not an axe maker, you know. I wouldn't expect an axe maker to come in the kitchen and tell me how to be a chef. But, yeah, I will put some a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil on the handle um, just, just to protect it against the wet because we are planning on going in the snow. Um, knowing the Scottish weather, you can get four seasons in one day. Uh, yeah. I just thought I'd show you my new bit of kit and hopefully I'll get out at some point when things ease off a little bit and I'll get out, give it a try. I'll show you me swinging it about and stuff and yeah, I may even do a camp, I'm not sure yet. I may even get to do myself a little bit of a wild camp. I might have to book in somewhere with me being in the Netherlands. But there is certain places you can book into where they give you a lot of room and it's still kind of wilderness-ish. But I'd rather test all my stuff out and get there in the middle of the Cairn Gorms and know that, you know, find out that something doesn't work then. Not that I can, you know, I can't think on my feet, but <laughs> yeah, <coughs> I'd rather have a heads up that this doesn't work or that doesn't work, just so I can, I can rectify it before then. I also had a bit of a miss up with my, with my rucksack. Um, some of the stitching is coming away and it's quite an old rucksack now i've had it for a, for a long time so i need to score myself another one before i go on the trip uh, i also need to get a co2 tester um, because as you may or may not know if you have a log burning fire inside your tank uh, the carbon monoxide which is basically odorless and you can't see it and you know that carbon monoxide can build up inside the tent and can kill you without you even realizing it's there so safety is a must if you've got a hot tent co2 or leave the door open you know depending on how cold it is but yeah co2 tester for me definitely just to, just to make sure make sure that we're safe you know safety is paramount in any situation especially when we're going to be walking like eight nine miles into the cane gone before we actually get to the campsite you know it's not going to be an easy fix to sit there and just you know get out of there if, if anything happens so safety being paramount we also got to get a first aid kit from somewhere i've got so i've got one in my car small small one in my car but i need to i need to expand on that a little bit just in case there's an accident so far and all at least four of us going uh but we'll see We'll see how that turns out on the day. You know what people are like, you know, sometimes they go, yeah, 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 and then they just don't turn up. So we'll see how that goes on the day. But it's two of us most definitely going, 100%, you know, no doubt. Even if we can't make it to Scotland, we'll, we'll find somewhere else where we, can, where we can do a wild camp in the UK. Anyways, I just thought I'd uh, show you my stuff and, you know, throw a little video up. Let you all know that I'm still alive, and you know, for my family and that, yeah, yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling a hell of a lot better. You know, Christmas was a, a bit of a, whoa, a, a bit of an achy time, but I'm over that now, and you know, feeling, feeling much better. I still got this cough. Can't shake the cough. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, apologize. Can't shake the cough for some reason. But at the same time as at the same time as I, as I got ill, I also got an abscess underneath my tooth, which was just absolutely murderous, absolutely shocking. I ended up having to sit there and wait till it made its way to the outside of my gum, and then obviously stabbed it with a needle, got the pus out, absolutely murdered. Wouldn't advise it to anyone, but you know, I was sat there. I got to the point where. The pain level was like, you know, seven and a half, eight, and I thought, you know, what do you do when you get a blister and you're not walking? Well, that's the best way to get rid of it. You, you burst it, don't you? So heating up a needle, stabbed it in there, squeezed all the stuff out. The day after, fantastic, fantastic. It hurt for a couple of hours, you know, but then I felt the, the pain going down slowly, slowly, slowly. And then, yeah, wicked. Back to normal now, back to normal. So yeah, 
uh, the more problem was I couldn't actually get to a dentist because it was obviously over the Christmas period and on top of that we're also in a lockdown so you know they're gonna think oh you know he's got a cold don't come in he's got coronavirus so I wouldn't have got seen anyway but yeah dealt with it dealt with it it's all good now um, oh I'll tell you what I did get though whilst you're here bought one of these little packs a tiny little pack and I needed something to put my herbs and spices in because you know you know I've got loads of herbs and spices there I don't know if you can see them but I've got a nice little a nice little thing full of herbs full of spices you know for when I'm out there in the field I don't want to be eating crap food you know I want to be eating something tasty even if it's noodles I can still jazz it up a bit you know still jazz it up and make it taste the way that, that I want it to taste but nice little compact nice little compact thing there uh, it's got like a little like a molly strap on it so you can strap it to your backpack or you can just fit it on the inside all good a little bit of velcro on that way on that side really cheap about I don't know about three quid three quid on Aliexpress and these little bottles these little bottles what I put my herbs and spices in little 10 mil bottles also about two quid two quid for ten or a quid for ten 125 or something Aliexpress handy as you want and gonna be a lifesaver where the flavor is concerned if I'm on a really long camp I'll definitely be taking them on the week's camp anyway because like I said you know I, I like my food I love my food I'm a, I'm a definite foodie so yeah anyways thanks for watching guys it was like I said it was just a quick update to show you my new stuff my new bits and bobs I'm still waiting on stuff to turn up uh, the camp's getting a lot closer hopefully the laws in the UK are relaxed enough for us to sit there and actually get from Manchester up to the Cairngorms without too much mire and uh, we're going for a for a seven day camp so we should have lots of footage of trying out the various different uh, bits and bobs that we've got i'll do a full rundown of the the cooker you know give you the dimensions the weights how it's performing out in the field uh, and one thing i did do was i changed the window on the on the on the on the stove the window was on this side and I thought you know when it's when the door's here when the door to the to the stove's here and the the door to the tents to my right and we're sleeping over to the left we're not going to get the light so I took a pair of pliers and a little a little a little jewel screwdriver and I pushed the, the pin out that was holding the, the glass the glass side on and I swapped it over to the other side uh, it hasn't done any damage it's still working perfectly as it was there's a little bit of warping in it, which I'll show you when I get there, but it's nothing to worry about, absolutely nothing to worry about. I did give it another burning, which which was a bit of a disaster, believe it or not, the, the burning. I um I didn't I didn't put the uh the pipe on, the chimney. I didn't put the chimney on and I smoked myself out, smoked the neighbours out. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't film that. But yeah, smoked everyone out. So uh, just a quick tip. Don't burn it without the. It might have just been the wood. It might have just been the wood. But, you know, it was. I had to just let it go out. Neighbours neighbors would have been complaining to death. So it wasn't a full a full burning. There's a little bit, of, like I said, a little bit of warpage. Nothing major. Uh, yeah. The window, like I said, swapped it over to the other side. So I've got the door here. I've got the window here. I've got the, the side panel here. We'll be sleeping over this side. We've got the light from the side panel. We've got the light from the door. If anyone's over this side, it's going to be, you know, it's much better, much more tailored to the tent. I didn't get asked when I first purchased the cooker which side I'd like the, the glass door on, but it's, it's easy enough to sit there and swap it over anyway. Anyway, I'm going to wrap it up because I'm, I'm waffling now and I'll speak to you again soon. If you like the video, please like it. Um, you know, hit the bell to be notified when we do the next videos and um, we've got a lot of interesting stuff coming up in the in the near future if you know if this lockdown eases off a little bit 
<coughs> if the lockdown eases off a little bit. Um, yeah, share it with your friends. If there's anyone that's uh, just starting to get their stuff set up and wants to know a little bit about wild camping or any of the kit that other people take with them, you know, uh, please do share, you know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, you know, it's free. It's free, it only takes two seconds and it helps the channel out, it helps us out, you know, and makes us know that, you know, we're actually worth, we're actually worth, uh, it's actually worth putting a video up. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and thanks for watching the video and if you made it to the end, I thank you, thank you very, very much and I'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.